Hey, what's up, Reefers? The end of 2017 has been an extremely eventful period of time. Not all good. Uh, today, I want to share two things that happened with the 45 gallon tank with you guys. Number one, I finally was able to move the gold wall hammer. And number two, I actually fragged up the large frog spawn that I have. I'm gonna share it with you guys right now. All right, guys, Sunday night, I figure, um, it's time to move that go torch. So it was underneath the Monty Pro cap before and it was obviously shaded. I've been wanting to move it, but I have no idea where to move it to. Uh, so I kinda figure out a little spot right here that I may be able to tuck the go torch into. But honestly, I don't know. Um, not 100% sure if it's gonna fit in, but figure, okay, you know what? I mean, it is time. Like the Monty Pro cap is getting larger and larger. And if I don't move the go torch now, it's gonna get hotter and hotter down the road. As you see, the toughest part is because like, it's kind of, it's, look, at, look at the shape of this. It's like a big block, and it's just kind of awkward. If I, oh, actually, you know what, it's not too bad. But I'm also really nervous moving it because it has been doing so well. And Warhammer is typically pretty touch and go in the sense that if uh, if I damage any section and if it start getting infection then the whole head is gone because the whole thing is a head it's not like branching where I can just break off a branch oh you know what these are all calcified sand look at this maybe I can make this a little smaller nope all right, I gotta put the camera down. I'm gonna mess with method placement a little bit. Actually, you know what? This way may be okay once expanded. Like this. What do you guys think? That may be all right. I'm doing this one-handed too. I'm really careful. I don't want to break the Monty Pro cap on that side. Let me bury this just a little bit. Sorry for the really shaky camera work, by the way, guys. I'm trying to. Get this done. And I wanna lean this a little bit towards the front. Slope it down a little bit. So it looks kinda nice. Uh, SPS there is about to have a really bad time. That guy right there. Uh, so. Crap, I may, I may to move the SPS. Well, I may rotate this. I'll move this up a little bit. If I go like this. Nah, it's too awkward. Right here is good. I'm just I'll just have to move the SPS. Alright, I think I think this is pretty good. Let's give this a go. See how see how this works out. Uh, right now there's a big gap down there, it's kinda odd, but at the same time it kinda works out. Kinda works out. It's a little swim through valley down there, which is kind of cool. Uh, I gotta figure out if I want to put anything down there later on. Uh, now I got all these display scores that I had to figure a spot out. Hey, what's up, Reefers? Today we are gonna do something <laughs> that's unthinkable for me. I am gonna frag that frog spawn. Now, if you're a long time follower of the channel, you know that I'm not a big fan of fragging corals because I like my corals large and plump. And that frog spawn is the prime example. However, if that comes at the cost of health of other corals, sometimes something has to be done. So if you look really carefully, you'll see the rose bulb of anatomy, all the tentacle on this side, it's all kind of shrunken up. Uh, same thing with the Monty Poro cap, it started getting a lot of bald spot, and this actually sparked this action right here. In my last 45 gallon update video, I talked about possible cause of these bald spots. There are a couple um, speculations, right? And I'll go down the list really quickly. Uh, number one, it may be pests at night. So I stayed up a couple of nights trying to find pests. I did not see anything. And the pattern does not really match up. Because if you look at the balding pattern, it's all up here. And that piece is completely clear. So in terms of pests, possible, but not super likely. Now the second thing, it's a uh, Elk dosing. So I've been dosing uh, BLS2 parts, alkalinity, and it could be due to elk swing, which is possible. But again, my question is that how come it's only in the top part but not at the bottom part? However, elk is still likely. Even though my elk is relatively 
solid for the past week. Last week, there's a slight swings. Uh, I think it went up 1.5 because I overdosed a little bit. So that may be a cause. However, let's keep going down the list first. The third possibility is the bi color blenny. Uh, as you have noticed, there's a bi color blenny that really loves to kind of just go in, in between the uh, money part cap. And a lot of people are saying that their bi color blenny has been stripping the flesh off their SPS coral or LPS coral. So that is definitely on the table as well. However, I have not noticed my bi color blenny uh, kind of scraping off the money part cap. So uh, I'm unsure, unsure at the moment. So we will keep watching it. The fourth possibility is the frog spawn. Now, if you look here, all the right side of frog spawn the tentacles are really stringy. So these are essentially sweepers. It detected there are corals in this vicinity and it's trying to defend its territory. So it's sending out sweepers. And if you look at the rose bubble anemone right there, you'll see all the tentacles are really short in comparison to the rest of the body. That means that it's being stung by something. And that something is this huge colony of frog spawn. Now, if you look at the balding pattern of the Montipora cap, you notice that all the highest point closest to the frog spawns um, are white. So that leads me to believe that maybe the frog spawn has something to do with it. It's not 100%, but it's definitely a possibility. And here comes the bicolor blending. This usually just kind of sit there. I have not seen him scrape uh, against the Montipora cap yet. So I'm kind of giving him a pass and just keeping an eye out. But the most likely culprit at this moment would be the frog spawn. And even if it's not the frog spine that's stinging the money bar cap. It's just a time. It just it's just time to frag it back a little bit because it has gotten so large. So let's take one last look at this massive frog spawn. And as you guys know, frog spawn is one of my favorite corals simply because of how easy it is to keep, how nice it looks, how much it fills out the tank, and how good it actually holds its value. Frog spawn is always in demand. But this guy has just gotten way too large. And I actually fragged this in half at the beginning of a year. I can I, and I gave half of it to one of my briefing buddies. And it looks like I'm gonna make another cut off it. So my goal today is to remove at least one third of this, ideally along this ridge, if I can figure out top and bottom once I get this out of the tank, uh, so that so that this will provide some room for the Rosebud anatomy to expand as well as to keep it from stinging the Monty Power cap if this is who's really stinging the Monty Power cap. Let's do it. All right, so the frog spawn is actually in two pieces. So we're gonna lift the top piece first. Uh, so if we wanna come a little bit closer and look from the top down, I'm gonna show you guys, see how close it is to the Rosebud anatomy is almost closing, uh, touching. So I'm gonna, usually I like to kinda Irritate the frogs on a little bit first, so they close up a little bit. If they're all expanded, sometimes uh, you may tear the tentacles, and that's never good. All right, so now you see they're like kind of like little pom pom balls instead of all fluffed out, so they're a little con uh, constricted. All right, so I'm gonna lift this piece first. First, this is a small piece that's just kind of resting at the top. That's what it looks like out of water. This is a one, two, three, four, five or six heads. So this is a small piece. And oh, that's a snail right here. I was about to say, there's a new head right there. Let's drop the snail back. Okay, so we're gonna put this in the bucket first. And they are okay out of the water for a while, so no worries. And then now, this is a challenge. <clears throat> this piece right here, this is huge. So let's see, what's the best way? Man, look at this. That's it. That's a whole tank right wow. there. That's that's all my tank. <laughs> this is it. All right. Look at this. Look at this. I got to be really careful too, because the skeleton is really brittle, so I don't want to break it. All right. Look at this. All right. So. I'm gonna go ahead, head to the bathroom, and we'll chop it up. Merry Christmas, guys. All right, guys, so I already chopped off that four heads right there. I found a reasonable break point. And uh, usually I can use a um, screwdriver to kind of just ply it off or just hammer it off, but that's not exact. Uh, that's why I have the Dremel tool here. I can do exact cuts. So I got that piece off right here, and this two heads is kind of like hanging out out here too. It doesn't really make sense. So I'm just gonna 
find a good break point. I think right here is a good break point to break right here. And I may further chop this down to mount this on a frag plug. So number one, safety first. Always, always, always. Especially the dremel tool, I do a hard goggle. And depending on the frag, this is pretty okay. A really nice grip, so I will grip it. But usually I like to put this on the table or something too, so it's solid and my fingers out of the way. But right here, this is a really thin cut, so let's do it. So if the piece is large, I'll go around, but this is pretty small, so I go straight in. And there you go. And that's it. So the reason I want to leave these on is that I can use this to anchor onto the live rocks, right? So now this is a lot smaller and it's more concentrated. So we got that, I'll put it in a bucket. And then we got two additional frag on top of that five head and one head. So here's a nice uh, four heads, a nice two heads right here. All right guys, so this is the final placement. Uh, and before I show you that, here, these are the frags that came out of it. So we got a nice six heads. Um, a 1.5 head, a 2 head, and another 4 heads I kind of tuck onto the side to extend that portion. But the main structure has been reduced to that little hemisphere right there. And that should be far enough from the bubble tip anatomy as well as the manipura cap to cause any damage. And we should be good for another few months before I have to frag it again. Three hours later. So it has been a couple hours and the frog spawn is opened up. Not fully, but pretty close. So now we can get a get a good look at the buffer zone that we have once again have. Uh, so we kind of trim out one third of the frog spawn colony. And let me show you the results. So back there. Actually, there used to be two single head frog spawn here and one of the single heads really close to the Mandipora is probably responsible for these bolt spot right there. So I removed it uh, and I placed one of the four heads uh, up here. And over here, we'll see a nice chunk of frog spawn as well. This is actually a nice six head frog spawn piece right here. Uh, right here we got a uh, 1.5 head. These are large by the way. And also right here, we got a single head that used to be over there. So um, I was able to take out a probably like one third of the frog spawn colony um, to create this new buffer area and to kind of extend the frog spawn this way, push it over a little bit this way so it looks a little bit more elongated versus just like a big ball right here. Four to six more days later. So it had been about five days since I fragged the frog spawn. As you can see, it has filled in to that spot pretty nicely. Now we have a little bit more buffer room, not as much as I've hoped, but there's a decent amount of buffer room compared to before, uh, but especially a decent amount of buffer room between the frog spawn and the Manipuri cap. Now this may be placebo, but I do feel that uh, the white spot are recovering and I don't see any new ones. So that may have been the tickets, uh, fragging back the frog spot. Again, I'm not sure it's only been a week. We'll give another two or three weeks before I call it. Now you may be asking, so where, where are all the frags that you created? So let's start from back here. Uh, so right here, there's actually four head frog spawn right there. Uh, just there, in, it's temporary. Uh, uh, the, this is sold already, so this is just a temporary spot. I'm just holding it right there. And if we swing over here, here's actually where a large, large chunk of it. This is a six head frog spawn frag right here. That used to sit at the top. And sliding over here, uh, we got a one head and here's a two head. And you may you may be asking, hey, in a perfect reefer, how come one of the head is kind of receded? So that's actually a pretty sad story. If you look here, this is the Jason Fox Limelight. And it used to sit right here and doing pretty well. But last week I was out with the family to Christmas Town of Williamsburg. I was gone for about two days on one night. At some point it fell face down, landed right on top of the frog spot. So they were stinging each other for God knows how long. And unfortunately, nobody came out the winner. And that's why you see that it's all straight up skeleton right there. And over here, you see the frog spawn head just all receded, at least on one side. So this is gonna take a while for them to recover. So they just like a really, really, really unfortunate accident. Uh, so I really wish I have like a frag tank, or at least some kind of uh, more frag rack than that space back here, so I can like keep all the frags on there and stuff on the sand bed. And this could have been avoided. So unfortunately, that is that. But 
Uh, you may also be asking if I'm selling the frags. Uh, I am, and they are pretty much all spoken for. So I posted uh, posted that I'm fragging the frog spawn back on my Instagram at inappropriate reefer, and I was trying to. Uh, some people asked, "Hey, are you selling on the frags?" And I said that yes, and I put the price down. I guess the price is pretty good. Um, so they were spoken for pretty quickly. For example, the four head I was selling for twenty dollars. So basically, it's five dollars per head. Um, the six heads. I was selling for thirty dollars, and also this individual head I'm just selling for I think I said either seven dollars or ten dollars I forget. Um, so they're pretty much for, spoken spoken of. A lot of you guys ask if I'm shipping them, but at the moment I'm not simply because I've never shipped coral before, so it intimidates the hell out of me. And also the weather on the east coast of U.S. right now is really cold, so I don't want to risk the corals. So apology to the to all of you guys who ask. Uh, for example, like Miami Reef guy, uh, he asked if I'm shipping corals, and I'm like no. <laughs> so uh, maybe when it comes to spring and fall, I'll give it a go. Three days later. Hey reefers, so it has been a little bit more than a week since I fragged back the uh, frog spawn. And as you can see, it has adapted really beautifully into the tank. Now we have a nice amount of room between the frog spawn and the Montipora. Not as much room as I would have liked between the anemone and frog spawn, but they don't really have a huge issue between the two. In terms of frags, I sold the six head really quickly, so I still have a few left. And on top of the frog spawns frags I have here, I also have quite a few frags I'm trying to sell off the frag rack to clear it out. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about where I sell my corals locally, um, as well as where I buy my corals for cheap. And some of them are actually excellent, great, awesome corals. Um, and there are, there are a couple options I normally go for, so I'll talk about that next week. But in terms of the Montipora cap, it is recovering. I don't see any more new white spot. So this leads me to believe that these little spots right here were probably caused by the frog spawn sending out sweepers. Um, and we'll see. Because if you look back here, that's where the full head ended up. I'm putting their temporal into a sold. If you look on the overflow, the closest part of the Montipora cap to the frog spawn is getting the same white spot. Uh, and as you can see, the frog spawn is sending out a sweeper right there. So at this point, I would say I am 85% to 90% certain that these white spot was caused by frog spawn sending out sweepers. But again, until it fully recovered, I cannot say for certain. So I'll keep an eye out. But so so far, I'm pretty happy uh, with this whole process of fragging it back. Uh, and I think the tank looks a little bit more under control. Oh, just like a sidebar. I was thinking about selling or fragging back the yellow Fiji leather until two days ago I heard about the Fiji banning of uh, coral collection exportation. Uh, so it sounds like I better hold on to this because I feel like it may be a little bit tougher to find in the future. Uh, so there's that. So we'll see. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for sticking to the end. If you have stuck to the end, please leave a comment saying that you're part of the hashtag Hardcore Reef Squad. With that said, I'll see you guys next week. Have a great week and enjoy the wonderful cold weather. <laughs> Later. Hey, what's up guys? I'm in New York right now and since we're in New York, we have to check out the Manhattan Aquarium.